Hey there people, so today I am bringing you my Terraria Lunar Event Expert Guide, including normal mode as well, uh, covering the weapons that you can get from the event, covering the Celestial Towers, also known as the Lunar Pillars, or the Lunar Towers, or the Celestial Pillars, how to summon them, each pillar and its enemies, strategies on fighting them, how to craft the obtainable weapons, armor, weapons, and other preparations, and showing you the fights as well. So this will include details for all classes, melee, ranged, mage, and summoner, as well as all the updated platforms. So that's PC, mobile now has the update as well, new gen consoles, including PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. Uh, because the Celestial and Lunar event only exists on platforms that have the 1.3 equivalent update. So, this guide is suitable for expert, but applicable for normal as well, just less necessary to super prepare in normal mode. I will explain wherever there are differences between normal and expert or different game versions. Plus, I will include timestamps for each section in the video description so you can skip ahead as needed. First of all, about the event. Um, including how to summon and spawn it. So, the lunar events begin immediately after you defeat the lunatic cultist boss. Four celestial pillars will spawn, spread out in four different areas above the surface of the world. They do not cover the entire surface of the world, but they do overtake large areas. They basically have like a zone around them uh, where they take effect, and you'll notice the background changes and enemies associated to that pillar will begin to spawn. Um, they will not normally spawn in the center of the map near your original spawn point. However, if you put your town somewhere else, they could spawn over your town, which would be a problem, but normally not right in the original uh, central spawn point. And they do not spawn in any particular order, so it's not like there's going to be always the vortex pillar on the far left or whatever. Um, they can be in any random order between the four of them, but all four will be there. Uh, each one must be defeated before you can move on in the game. Uh, 60 seconds after you defeat the last of the four pillars, Moon Lord will appear to bring you the final battle of the game against Moon Lord. Uh, once you do defeat all four pillars and do fight the Moon Lord, the cultists should respawn. Whether you win or lose against the Moon Lord, uh, the cultists should respawn, which means you can fight the lunatic cultist again and then repeat the events again, uh, which allows you to continue to farm the event and to play through the lunar events as much as you want. The pillars will remain in your world until you defeat them all. So basically, once you fight the lunatic cultist, this is going to happen, and you're kind of stuck with it. However, once you have defeated all four of the pillars, uh, you can, if you don't want to fight Moon Lord, you can actually exit the game in that little 60-second window between the last of the four pillars and the Moon Lord fight if you're not ready to actually fight Moon Lord. Although, that might mean that you're going to have to do the whole thing again <laughs> in order to fight Moon Lord later. But... Uh, that's just a little tip uh, if you want to prepare a little extra, if you want to get some more of the weapons and drops from the pillars, uh, you can just exit and basically start that whole process again. But you'll have to fight the lunatic cultist again, and then you'll have to fight the pillars again, unless you have enough fragments to get the celestial sigil, but that's another story. So, now the pillars and their enemies. Each of the pillars is protected by an impenetrable force field. You cannot hurt them uh, until you do the right thing. Uh, each spawns its own unique enemies. You must defeat 100 of each pillar's enemies in normal mode or 150 in expert before that pillar's shield will dissipate and allow you to attack the pillar itself. That's what brings down the shield. you got to kill enough enemies. 100 in normal, 150 in expert. Uh, and that's the unique enemies for that pillar. Now that enemy count and the damage inflicted to the pillar will not reset if you die, so you can basically just keep going at it, um, as long as you're not in hardcore mode. Uh, you can just keep going at it and fight, fight, fight. It uh, doesn't matter how many times you die. However, um, the damage count, uh, the enemy count that you've killed and the damage uh, inflicted on a pillar will be reset if you quit the game. You, Once you've defeated a pillar, it's not going to respawn when you exit and uh, re-enter the game. However, whatever damage you've done to one before defeating it will reset uh, if you quit. But, you know, you can fight them one at a time. Take it a day at a time if you want. <laughs> exit between each one. Just make sure that when you're fighting one, you kind of finish the job on that one at least. It's also important to note uh, here that the pillars themselves are immune to all debuffs. So you can't use your Icar or whatever other uh, Cursed Inferno and, and those kind of debuffs against them. The pillars themselves are immune. Uh, 
Also that the enemy spawned by the pillars will never drop coins. This is not a good event for making money. They do not drop coins. They do not drop presents during the Christmas event. Uh, they do not drop goodie bags during Halloween and they do not drop biome keys. So if you need those things, this isn't the place. Um, now the damage output and the life of the spawned enemies are doubled in experts. So they're gonna have the enemy spawned by the pillars are going to have double the health and do double the damage if you're playing in expert mode, which makes it really tough. They're also more knockback resistant in expert mode generally. The pillars themselves, however, do not gain any extra health or other boosts in expert mode, just the enemies spawned by them. So let's start talking about the pillars. First of all, the Stardust Pillar. Um, it's a summoner themed pillar. Again, each of these is associated with one of the major four classes of players in Terraria, the four classes of gear. So the Stardust Pillar is associated with summoner class, uh, has minion based attacks sort of. Um, it spawns in enemies directly on the screen as you would if you're a summoner. It summons in uh, some of those enemies directly from the pillar. The spawn points can potentially damage you when it's spawning those enemies. You can get damaged by that spawn process um, and by the enemies themselves. So if those, uh, also a um, little tip with this Stardust Pillar, if the enemies are spawning too quickly because it does spawn some directly from the pillar, uh, just move a little ways away from the pillar. So you, you know, get the pillar off screen, uh, far enough off screen and it won't be spawning enemies directly. That'll kind of decrease the rate at which they spawn a bit effectively. Um, if you get away from the pillar itself, it won't be spawning them directly anymore. And so you won't have quite as many spawning as fast. Now, there are six enemies, as you can see on the little graphic there, uh, that are associated with the Stardust Pillar. It's uh, the Flow Invader, the Stargazer, the Star Cell, the Twinkle Popper, uh, with the Twinkle Little Minion that the Twinkle Popper itself spawns, and the Milky Way Weaver. So you'll notice the flying worm-like Milky Way Weaver, um, that's the bottom left there, can only be destroyed by targeting its head. You can't hit the rest of it. The Flow Invader at the top left uh, shoots smaller minions at the player, including a little finer final burst when you kill it. So keep an eye out for that when you're fighting those Flow Invaders. They're going to shoot something at you when you kill them and also the rest of the way as well. But uh, they'll be shooting a little bit here and there. But when you kill them, they're going to shoot one last burst. And it's uh, often a more powerful burst. Uh, the Twinkle Popper there spawns that smaller Twinkle. It spawns um, multiples of those. Those Twinkles will chase you and explode on contact. So obviously you don't want to be exploded upon. Try to kill those. <laughs> You're going to want to kill everything, obviously. Um, the Star Cells, when you damage them, um, they will split into smaller cells when you sort of kill them. But those smaller cells, um, if you don't destroy those, the smaller cells will regrow. And if those smaller cells, you allow them to regrow without destroying them, they will then become full size star cells and will in turn split again when you destroy them enough. So this uh, the star cells can lead to massive numbers of star cells because each one that you attempt to destroy will split into two. If you don't destroy the smaller ones, they're gonna regrow into big ones, which can again split into two. And you can imagine how that's kind of a multiplicative effect. So there's two options with those star cells. Either you want to kill them very quickly, including the smaller ones, uh, to get those out of the way, or you can actually use that um, as a sort of strategy by letting them regrow because the, the large ones, only the large ones count towards bringing that Stardust Pillar's shield down. And you can kind of like, you can get a ways away from the pillar and try to concentrate only on those star cells and allow them to regrow and then keep like, killing them, but not killing the smaller ones so that you get tons and tons of them. And that's one way to bring the Stardust Pillars shield down quickly uh, because the large ones only count for the shield. And if you're far enough away, you won't be spawning more enemies. So you can use that as a little strategy against the Stardust Pillar if you're up for having tons and tons of star cells on screen and fighting tons and tons of them. Um, but let's move on. So the Vortex Pillar um, it's of course a ranged theme, uh, projectile attacks. You're gonna have enemies basically launching projectile attacks at you, uh, themed after the ranged class. So the vortex pillar occasionally creates portals uh, above itself, I believe, 
uh, is where it creates those, um, which may zap you with lightning or they may spawn two alien hornets. So you kind of don't want to stay too close to the vortex pillar because of, of those portals. You're going to get either zapped with lightning or inundated with extra enemies. So a little bit similar to the Stardust one there, but a little bit different as well. Uh, there are five enemies associated with the Vortex Pillar. There's the Storm Diver, bottom right there, uh, Vortexian, the Alien Larva, Alien Hornet, and Alien Queen. So the Vortexians will actually spawn a Vortex when they're killed, which also shoots lightning bolts. So, you know, the Pillar spawns Vortexes, which can shoot lightning bolts or spawn enemies. The Vortexians, when you kill them, are also going to spawn a little vortex when you kill those and uh, that can also shoot you with lightning so this can be a problem if uh, those are close to you and or if there are large numbers of vortexians around you're going to watch out for those going to need to watch out for those vortexes and the associated lightning um, and there's kind of you can see i put some little arrows in the graphic there the alien queens spawn alien larva when they're killed which in turn grow into alien alien hornets if you don't destroy the larva and uh, the alien hornets can in turn grow back into uh, alien queens if you don't kill those fast enough. So there's kind of a little cycle there. Um, queens spawn larva, larva turn into hornets, hornets turn into queens, which can spawn more larva. So obviously that can be a problem. And the queens are a particularly big problem because uh, the alien queen projectiles that they fire at you inflict a buff called a debuff called distorted, which causes you effectively to move up and down uncontrollably. It really messes up your ability to fight against the enemies. So um, so that can be a problem. Make sure you take out those alien queens particularly. Also, you'll, you're going to want to take out everything else, but the larva and the hornets can turn into queens. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, as far as strategies against the vortex pillar, otherwise staying on the ground and taking cover actually works pretty well against the vortex pillar's enemies. Um, because most of their attacks will not go through blocks, unlike attacks from a lot of the other uh, pillars. So you can actually use cover against uh, most of the Vortex Pillar's enemies, but obviously the major strategy, as with most of these things, is to kill them as fast as possible. So uh, then let's move on to the uh, Nebula Pillar. Nebula Pillar is magic themed, so it's focused on sort of unusual attacks, let's say, magic, uh, strange things going on. Um, the Nebula Pillar, unlike the others, does not have any direct attack of its own. It doesn't spawn vortexes or enemies directly. Um, and there are only four enemies associated with the Nebula Pillar, which doesn't mean it's the easiest, but uh, basically uh, there's the Nebula Floater, there's the predictor, there's the evolution beast, and the brain suckler. So the first three of those will mostly just fire projectiles after you. The brain suckler, on the other hand, uh, moves very quickly and attempts to latch onto your head. If the brain suckler grabs you on your head, it will darken your screen so you can only see a small area. can be a serious problem because then you can't see the other enemies. And uh, so if you don't kill those brain sucklers particularly quickly, um, you know, they're going to grab your head and mess up your game, basically. So uh, keep that in mind with the brain cyclers. The evolution beast uh, also will attempt to ram you in addition to, um, you know, the projectiles. And the evolution beast is the only one among uh, the nebula pillars enemies that is immune to all debuffs. So you can use debuffs against a lot of the pillar enemies, not the pillars themselves, but many of the enemies. Evolution beast is definitely an ex exception to that. Um, and yeah, it's gonna it's gonna try to ram you, so get out of the way. <laughs> and the Nebula Floater shoots fast-moving lasers and teleports around, which makes it very difficult to hit. So uh, Nebula Floater homing weapon might be nice there, uh, just because it's gonna be jumping around real quick. But let's uh, move on to the Solar Pillar now. The Solar Pillar has a melee theme, uh, and of course the associated attacks therefore are mostly physically physical contact based attacks. Um, basically most of the enemies are gonna charge at you and, and just try to hit you directly. The solar pillar itself does fire solar fragment fireballs, which then rain downward, it kind of fires them up and then they just gradually fall. So those uh, fireballs can be very damaging, so it does have its own direct attack. It also has six enemies associated with the solar pillar. There's the Korite, the Selenian, 
the Dracanian, the Dracomyer, the Sroller, and the Kraltipede. So, uh, and in addition to all of those, you can also have Dracanians riding Dracomyers, which are uh, called Dracomyer riders, and you can kill one or the other or both, um, and they'll separate basically if you just kill one. So most of the enemies associated with the solar uh, pillar are only immune to Confuse. However, the Korites are immune to several other debuffs, so just be careful of that. Korites are immune to Fire, Poison, Venom, Cursed Flames, and Shadow Flame. Uh, Korites can also travel through blocks, unlike most of the other enemies. Uh, so yeah, you can, you can again, kind of use some cover against all of these melee-based enemies, but the Korites are going to get through and they're going to hurt you directly anyway. Um, you'll also particularly want to beware of the Selenians because the Selenians reflect many projectiles when spinning. There's a little spinning thing they do. Um, they will actually reflect all bullets, all arrows, and all darts. Uh, so you don't want to use those <laughs> against the Selenians uh, because they will reflect, reflect back and potentially you can end up being hit yourself by your own weapons, which can be a serious problem. However, they do not reflect rockets, uh, so that is one weapon you can use against them. Particularly, they are dangerous with chlorophyte bullets uh, because if you use chlorophyte bullets against you, uh, when those are reflected, they'll actually home in on you. <laughs> so do not use chlorophyte bullets against Selenians. Beware. Um, they do also reflect Christmas Tree Sword and Meow Meow projectiles. They also reflect the Scourge of the Corruptor, little eater things. The Vampire Knives are reflected back. Paladin's Hammer, Frost Hydra projectiles, Ballista and Flame Burst sentries. The Vortex uh, Beater's extra little projectile. The Phantom Phoenix project projectile. The Electrosphere Launcher's projectiles. And the Jack-O-Lantern Launcher's projectiles. The Stinger Bolts from the Stinger. Uh, the Nebula Arcanum and ne Nebula Blaze also reflected back. And finally, the Lunar Flare projectiles. So all of those projectiles, that big long list, many projectiles will be reflected. Not all. Uh, rockets are not reflected. Things I didn't mention. Um, a lot of sword beams actually are not reflected. But uh, again, Christmas Tree Sword and Meow Mir, they those ones are. So just be careful what you're using. If you see something bouncing back after you, at you, use something else. Um, the Selenians do, however, take triple damage from other weapons when spinning, so if you choose your weapons correctly, you're going to kill them relatively easily. Uh, melee players will probably want to fight them without projectiles. Uh, ranged players should use rockets. Mages and summoners are recommended to use minions that inflict direct attacks against them uh, so that you know projectiles aren't being reflected back. So yeah, I'm going to go on a little bit more about the solar pillar because it is, um, in many people think it's the most difficult one. The Kraltipedes are also a serious problem to watch out for as they make a point to target airborne players. So that makes it difficult to dodge other enemies without drawing the attention of the Kraltipedes. If you're on the ground or on a, a stable surface, basically, they're going to ignore you. Um, however, if you're in the air, they're going to target you specifically. So Kraltipedes can only be killed by hitting the glowing section on the end of their tail. So unlike those ones from the Stardust, you're hitting the other end, basically their butt, let's say. <laughs> the Kraltipedes actually take 10 times the normal damage on their tail, but they show no visible health bar. So uh, with Vampire Knives or the Spectre Hood, hitting the Kraltipedes tail can actually give a massive heal for each hit because it's 10 times more normal damage, which means 10 times healing. Uh, so keep that in mind too. So they can be useful, um, but they're also a, a danger, uh, particularly you might not want to be flying around with wings when they're around. Uh, platforms though actually count as standing on the ground for the Kraltipedes, so building some platforms near the solar pillar is a great option. You can either build one or more long platforms or a series of small ones to jump or fly between. Um, they also will not target players suspended by a grappling hook except for the static hook. So if you're going to use a grappling hook, uh, you can latch to a block and that's going to work well. However, not the static hook, any other grappling hook. Uh, another option is to use the UFO or a similar flying mount to hover slightly above the ground. Uh, the Kraltipedes will only target players that are roughly eight tiles above the ground. So if you're close to the ground but not on the ground, that actually can work. 
Another good option against the uh, solar pillar in general is to use the Neptune's shell or one of its derivatives, uh, like the celestial shell, um, in a pool of water. So if you have a good sized pool of water, basically the Neptune's shell or the things you can um, combine that into will slow down your enemies, but still allow you to move quickly because you turn into the merfolk and so you can move quickly underwater. Effectively, it's almost like flying, but meanwhile, your enemies are gonna be slowed down by the water, so uh, that's a good option. Um, the Scutlix mount can also work well against the solar pillar because while it is ground-based, it moves fast, jumps high, and fires extra lasers, so that's gonna help you do extra damage. Um, and you can get out of the way quickly, and because it jumps fast, you're not going to attack, uh, not going to um, get the attention of those crawltipedes too quickly. So that's all um, stuff you can do for the solar pillar. Now uh, let's talk about the drops and craftable weapons. So each pillar. Um, drops 12 to 60 of its respective fragments in normal mode or 18 to 90 fragments in expert. Um, and since the weapons crafted from them require 18 of a single type of fragments, 18 from a specific pillar, uh, in expert, for every pillar you defeat, you can craft at least one of the weapons associated with it. So each pillar in expert, you can craft one. In normal, you're gonna have to be a little bit lucky to get at least 18 fragments from a pillar. Um, although the range is, it's possible that you'll get less, but most often you're gonna get enough or more. Uh, the Stardust fragments allow you to craft the Stardust Dragon Staff and or the Stardust Cell Staff. It's 18 fragments for each weapon that I'm gonna mention here. The Vortex fragments allow you to craft the Vortex Beater Gun and or the Phantasm Bow. So again, these are weapons themed with the uh, associated, the class associated to that pillar. So Stardust, you're gonna get summoner weapons. Vortex, you're gonna get ranged weapons. Um, the Nebula fragments allow you to craft the Nebula Arcanum and or the Nebula Blaze. So that's magic themed, magic weapons. The solar fragments allow you to craft the solar eruption and or the daybreak, which are melee weapons. So basically you're going to need 18 fragments for each weapon. So if you only have 18 or you have uh, less than double that, which is 36, then you're gonna have to choose. If you have at least 36, you can craft both if you want to. Um, and basically these are all great, powerful weapons. They're going to be very useful. Uh, so that's, uh, we'll get to that in the strategies in a second. Um, yeah, and there are other things that you can uh, craft as well. Weapons are not the only option, but they are very useful through the rest of the Lunar Celestial events and against the Moon Lord. These are very powerful weapons again. Uh, you can also use the, the uh, fragments though towards crafting super healing potions. Uh, if you have enough of all the fragments, you can craft the Celestial Sigil to summon the Moon Lord manually without going through the whole series of events again. Um, you can also craft the Lunar Hook you can craft special blocks and dies, and after you defeat the Moon Lord, you'll be able to craft more items using fragments along with the Luminite that is dropped by the Moon Lord. Um, it's also worth noting, I mentioned the Celestial Sigil, however, you cannot use the Celestial Sigil while the pillars are uh, in the world, so while the Celestial events are still on, you can't use that Celestial Sigil only um, before or after defeating all the pillars. Um, before the pillars have spawned into the world or after you've gotten rid of them, then you can use that to summon Moon Lord manually. Um, so let's talk strategies. So these are general strategies. I already mentioned uh, specific things to do with each pillar while discussing each pillar. So these are general strategies that you can use against all of the pillars. So the pillars, first of all, can be fought in any order you choose. Uh, you can choose to fight any one of them first. You might just fight whichever is closest. Uh, but generally, the best strategy as far as that is to fight the pillar that matches your chosen class first so that you can craft the new weapons for your class. Uh, alternatively, you can fight the Stardust pillar first um, or after the one for your chosen class. You're gonna probably wanna fight the Stardust pillar early, either first or second, ideally, uh, in order to obtain more powerful minions because, of course, all classes can use minions. And that means um, whether you're a summoner or not, it's useful to fight the Stardust Pillar to get more powerful minions. Minions are going to be very useful against all of the pillars in general. 
Uh, so that's why fighting Stardust Pillar first or second is a good idea as well. Um, but again, you'll also you're also going to want to fight the one associated with your class. If you're a ranger, fight the Vortex Pillar. If you're a uh, mage, fight Nebula. If you're uh, melee, fight Solar uh, early on to get those weapons to use against the other ones. Um, also, mounts are generally effective. Again, I, I mentioned the Scutlix mount is particularly useful against all the pillars, not just the Solar Pillar, because it auto-fires its own lasers. Uh, most of the enemies spawned by the pillars can drop banners so if you get a banner make sure to use it in that area if you're still fighting that pillar to make that fight easier because banners of course um, basically make it easier for you to kill them those specific enemies so make sure you put those up if you get them um, also another strategy you can use in general it can be easier to stay near the edge of the pillar's zone and retreat when you get low on health because again retreating does not reset the kill count against that pillar or the damage inflicted to it only exiting the game will reset that so uh, basically you can play a little uh, you know attack retreat a little bit of kiting even if you want to against those enemies um, and that will you know help you survive without having to make the journey all the way back every time uh, you can you know run away and heal a little and then come back and fight some more um, you can also even build a house for your nurse and assign her a house uh, near there with a bed outside each zone. Um, you're going to want it outside of the zone so that your nurse doesn't get killed, but uh, that uh, if you set your spawn point using the bed, that will allow you to teleport back to your nurse for a quick heal, and if it's close to that zone, then you can get right back in the fight right afterwards. Um, you'll also notice while fighting the pillars that red laser-like lines will fire from the enemies that you defeat associated with the pillar towards the pillar. For each enemy killed, you'll see a little red laser firing back. And that's one way, I mean, if you want to count them, you can count the lasers, but um, those lasers will fire back towards the uh, pillar until the shield is down, which means when you stop seeing those red lines firing back towards the pillar, that means you've presumably defeated enough enemies and the shield should be down so you can stay away from the pillar and not have to like stare at stare at it to see when the shield comes down when you stop seeing those lines firing back that means the shield is down once the shield is down you can use stationary weapons like the nimbus rod or sentries um, those are highly effective against the pillars themselves once that shield is down uh, nimbus rod you're going to want to spawn those clouds right on top of the pillar and that'll help take it out very quickly so let's now talk about armor the basic standard for melee players you're going to want to use beetle armor uh, for ranged players you're going to want to use shroomite armor uh, mages are going to want to use specter armor um, mages actually should use the specter mask as much as possible to inflict as much damage as possible and swap to the hood only when you need to heal Summoners can summon uh, minions using the spooky armor and then swap to tiki armor to add one extra minion. Um, that's you know an ideal situation. You can pick one or the other, whichever you favor, um, but you can get a little more damage if you use spooky, summon your minions, uh, and then swap to tiki, and you can get one more minion that way. Because your summons use the damage that was in effect uh, when they were summoned. That's why that works. Uh, for summoners, it is also possible um, actually, for all classes, it's also possible to use hybrid armor, essentially, uh, by including parts from the Old Ones Army event armors. So this is uh, for 1.3.4 and up. Currently, that's still PC, but those, that should be coming to the other updated platforms. Um, so how this works, melee users can combine the Chlorophyte Mask with the Valhalla Knight's Breastplate, which gives like healing bonuses as well as strong uh, powers and stuff, uh, and also the Valhalla Knight's Greaves. Um, you can alternatively use the Shinobi Infiltrator Helmet instead of the Chlorophyte Mask to give better minion and sentry capacity, but that's at a cost of lower defense and boost. Uh, but basically, the idea there is the Val Valhalla Knight armor has like some serious tanking stuff, but um, you can use a different uh, headpiece to get better stats effectively. Um, for ranged users, you might want to try swapping in the Forbidden Treads from the Forbidden Armor in place of the Shroomite Leggings. Otherwise, you uh, keep the Shroomite set but just swap in the Forbidden Treads for your legs. That increases your minion capacity by two. Uh, you do lose the Stealth bonus on your Shroomite set and 
some minor stat boosts, but two extra minions is a very useful thing against the pillars. Uh, mages can consider using Hallowed Headgear, the Valhalla Knight's Breastplate again because of the defense and boosts from that, and the Dark Artist's Leggings. Um, that's an interesting little setup. I'm just getting this from the wiki to be honest, but um, yeah, it, it makes some sense if you look at the stats. Hallowed Headgear, Valhalla Knight's Breastplate, and Dark Artist's Leggings. So basically, that's going to give you good magic boost, but also reasonable defense. Uh, summoners can use a rather convoluted setup if you want to get into this stuff. Um, what it's going to do is maximize the combination of minion damage and survival because the summoner sets, the native full summoner sets, have very low defense and obviously these are very tough events. So what summoners can do is first <laughs> equip the Shinobi Infiltrator's Helmet, Valhalla Knight's Breastplate, and Red Riding Leggings. This is going to require playing the Old One's Army a lot to get all this stuff, uh, but Shinobi Infiltrator's Helmet, Valhalla Knight's Breastplate, Red Riding Leggings, summon as many minions as possible with that setup, then swap the spooky helmet in for your headpiece, summon one more minion, swap the rest of the spooky armor in, summon two more minions, because it has a higher minion count. Finally, swap in the forbidden treads for your leg piece, uh, and then after, after swapping in the forbidden treads, re-equip the Valhalla Knight's breastplate. So how that works, um, again, the forbidden treads give you plus two minions, that's why you do it in that order. So you get to keep all those minions you summoned. You have uh, maximum damage output from using uh, summoning them uh, with the maximum bonuses at that time. And why this is good, it provides 46 defense, which is way above your normal, normal summoner sets. Um, and it also gives you regenerative boosts, mainly from that Valhalla Knight's Breastplate. So summoning the minions with those pieces in that order means that the minions will retain higher damage. Your minions are going to do, uh, they're going to, you know, be very powerful, uh, but you're also going to have good defense. So that's what that setup's all about. Now, as far as those weapons, um, so the Flareon works uh, pretty well for melee players. For melee players, Flareon works well due to its homing ability. The Influx Waver, Terra Blade, and the Eye of Cthulhu Yo-Yo along with the Yo-Yo Bag are also all good options. Vampire Knives, of course, are helpful for healing in general, but again, keep in mind that they can be reflected by the Solar Pillar's Selenians, so against the Solar Pillar, you're going to want to be a little careful there. Um, however, when they are reflected, they lose their lifesteal and will not boost the Selenians' health, so it's not a huge worry, but just keep uh, an eye on that a little. Uh, the Possessed Hatchet can also be a decent option due to the homing capability. Um, after you've defeated the Solar Pillar, of course, you can then craft the Solar Eruption, which is an excellent choice against basically everything. Uh, also, the Daybreak is a decent option as well. As far as ranged weapons, the Xeno Popper with Crystal Bullets is the most powerful um, gun, most powerful weapon option, but it is hard to aim, uh, especially, obviously, Crystal Bullets are not homing. Uh, so you're going to have to aim well. It has a firing delay, but it is technically most powerful. The chain gun with chlorophyte bullets works great as well uh, because of that homing ability. That's going to take things out very quickly, except against the solar pillar and the selenians, because again, selenians will reflect chlorophyte bullets, so don't use chlorophyte bullets against the selenians. Um, the snowman cannon has powerful homing rocket projectiles, and the explosions do not hurt you. You'll want to use rocket three with that. Uh, so Snowman Cannon is particularly good against the Solar Pillar because those projectiles are not reflected against the Selenians, so you might want to keep that around. The Electrosphere Launcher is an excellent choice in general against clusters of enemies. If you have large amounts of enemies on the screen, um, that's going to take out whole clusters. However, um, the projectiles from the Electrosphere Launcher are reflected by the Selenians, so again, uh, again, watch out against the solar pillar. Uh, if you like bows, Tsunami with Holy Arrows is an excellent choice and also clears crowds quickly. Powerful, those stars, um, all that stuff. It's going to be very good. Um, and of course, after you've defeated the Vortex Pillar, the Phantasm will do even better than the Tsunami. And uh, the Vortex Beater is also an excellent choice. 
As far as magic weapons, the Razor Blade Typhoon is an excellent option with homing capabilities for mages. Uh, you can use that in combination if you want to. The Razor Pine, Lizard Staff, and Laser Machine Gun are also powerful weapons, very powerful weapons, but you'll need to be able to aim well with those. Uh, Magnet Sphere will also inflict a lot of damage. The Golden Shower is still helpful against most enemies. It's going to still inflict the debuff against many of the enemies. Uh, the Nimbus Rod and Rainbow Gun are excellent for inflicting bonus damage against many enemies at once. Um, They're also particularly excellent against the pillars themselves once the shield comes down. So Nimbus Rod and Rainbow Gun are good here. After defeating the Nebula Pillar, the Nebula Arcanum is very strong uh, against the remainder of the events. The Nebula Blaze is also um, you know, an alternative to the Razor Pine, essentially, if you can aim well. Uh, but both Nebula weapons will be ineffective and dangerous against those Solar Pillar Selenians. So, um, yeah, they're the only uh, major magic weapons, I think, that are reflected. And uh, so do not use the Nebula Pillar weapons against those Selenians, those pesky Selenians. Um, as far as summoning weapons, so before defeating the Stardust Pillar, the Xeno Staff is going to be the best minion option. Uh, Tempest Staff can also work well. It's powerful, but it's not as accurate. The uh, Xeno Staff UFOs will zap around very quickly and take things out very quickly, so uh, that's why the Xeno Staff is very useful. Uh, also, as far as sentries, the Frost Hydra, or uh, again, if you've got the 1.3.4 update or better, uh, the Old One's Army sentries can also be used. Uh, but those also, you have to be careful against those Selenians in the Solar Pillar because they Selenians will reflect F Frost Hydra and Old One's Army Sentry projectiles. Now, after you've defeated the Stardust Pillar, the uh, Stardust Dragon and Stardust Cells are both excellent minion options. Uh, you might want to use a combination. The Stardust Dragon will zip around and kill a lot of stuff. It's very, very powerful. However, um, it's only going to be in one place at a time, so... You do have to be a little careful there. The Stardust Cells uh, also. The problem is they're they're not as fast as the Xenostaff's UFOs, but they are more powerful, so uh, take your pick, I guess. Now, as far as accessories and buffs, uh, you will want to use the emblem for whichever class you are playing to boost your damage output. The Destroyer Emblem and or the Celestial Shell or the Celestial Stone all provide excellent boosts at this point. You can also add the Avenger emblem as well. You can stack all of those, as many as you can fit, for massive damage boosts. Uh, for melee users, the Mechanical Glove will be excellent for boosting damage and speed, and you can also stack that with the Fire Gauntlet. Uh, some of those enemies will be uh, vulnerable to fire, but all in all, you may want to stick with the Mechanical Glove. If you are using a yo-yo as one of your primary weapons, you will definitely want the yo-yo bag, of course. For ranged users, the sniper scope is basically, you know, it's effectively like another emblem type thing that adds considerable further damage and critical strike chance. The magic quiver is also a good idea if you're using a bow or repeater like the tsunami, or you can't even use the Daedalus storm bow. For magic users, um, the celestial emblem, of course, boosts damage and mana star pickup range, also stacks with all the other stuff. Uh, magic users will also want the magic cuffs or the celestial cuffs to help restore mana. Now at this point, wings and, and or boots may be important depending on your strategy for movement speed. You may or may not want them. Um, alternatively, you can use a fast or flying mount and free up accessory slots. So again, I've mentioned the Scutlix mount is particularly highly recommended for these events because it moves fast, jumps high, and fires lasers, which kind of eliminates the need a bit for uh, wings or boots. So that's something to consider. Uh, the UFO mount can also work. The cute fish run mount, if you're playing an expert and willing to do liquid dips because you'll need to dip in liquid to increase its speed to be able to move quickly. Uh, if you are using wings, fish run wings will be the best available at this point. Of course, various others can also work. Uh, Betsy's wings and the hoverboard can also work very well because of their fast horizontal movement speed that can help you dodge out of the way. Uh, you can even use a frost leg with a, or a frog leg with any set of wings to increase your vertical movement speed. Um, basically, increase your ascent and fly a little faster up. Uh, if you need running speed, go for lightning or frost spark boots at this point to maximize um, your running speed. 
But yeah, I, I would recommend actually a mount at this point, personally. Uh, also, the Master Ninja gear can be very helpful for all classes for dodging and avoiding damage. The Shield of Cthulhu can also work well. It's a shorter dash, but can uh, allow you to gain a little bit of temporary in invincibility if you use it right. Frozen Turtle Shell and or the Expert Corruption World Only Worm scarf, scarf will help to reduce damage taken. The Charm of Myths, of course, helps with health regeneration and reduces health potion cooldown time. The Cross Necklace, or better yet, Star Veil, can help with avoiding damage if you have extra spots for that. The Shiny Stone from uh, Expert Mode Golem can also be very helpful for these events um, for healing. Uh, because uh, again, you can use that retreat away strategy. So you, you can do like what I've what I'm doing here. I'm just keeping it in my vanity slot, and you can swap it in uh, when needed because it gives you basically very fast healing. So you can see my setup here. Actually, um, I've kept my wings in for now. I'm kind of debating on that, but um, I've basically got a series of emblems and damage boosts here, uh, celestial shell included. Got my charm of myth so I can heal quickly, and I've got uh, other things kind of, you know, on uh, on backup here. Particularly that shiny stone. If you need to retreat out of the way, you can get out of the zone of the pillar, swap in your shiny stone, heal up quickly, and that's going to be very useful. Um, there are, of course, other things to do. You can you you'll always want to make sure that you reforge your weapons and accessories to get a good modifier to boost the stats on those weapons and accessories. So for accessories, uh, you can either go menacing for damage output, or particularly an expert, uh, you'll want you might want wording for defense, and that's what I've done. All of these accessories, almost all of them. This one's only armored. Uh, that's kind of next best to warding. Um, but you can see warding plus four defense from each and every one of the other ones. That's very useful, obviously. Uh, defense is very important, particularly an expert. There are also other things you can use. Uh, the crystal ball, of course, provides boosts for magic users. Uh, the ammo box reduces ammo consumption for ranged players. The sharpening station increases armor penetration, so more effective defense for melee weapons. The bewitching table um, is useful not only for summoners, but for others as well to give you an extra minion. You may also um, want the summoning potion, similar effect. So I actually do have uh, that in here, even though I'm not a summoner. Summoning potion is still useful to have an extra minion. Um, you'll want food for the well-fed buff, particularly if you're playing on expert. There are penalties if you don't have um, food consumed. It'll uh, so if you consume food, your health will regenerate faster, and so on. Other bunch of boosts there. Uh, potions can of course also give you an edge, so you'll want the best health potions available as always. Mana potions if you're a magic user. Iron Skin, Regeneration, Endurance, and Life Force potions will help you survive the fight. Swiftness will help you move faster. Rage or Wrath will give you damage boosts. Archery potion is important for arrow-based weapons. Ale or Sake can help melee users increase damage output, but lowers defense. Um, and yeah, flasks can be useful for melee players here as well, because many of those minions are vulnerable to um, debuffs like Icar and so on. So you will want those flasks if you're a melee player. Um, magic users will want mana regeneration and magic power potions. Again, summoning potion useful for everyone, but particularly summoners. Um, and yeah, you may even want the inferno potion. I still have some of those here, so we'll see uh, if that helps maybe with some projectiles and stuff. And that's all that. So uh, what I'm going to do next is fight each of the pillars. And basically, I'm just going to show you a bit. I'm not going to bore you with the entire fight against 150 enemies for each one. Uh, but I'm going to get set up here, and we'll get to that. OK, so I'm basically just ready to fight the uh, Vortex pillar here first. Again, I am a ranged player, and it happened to be the closest one anyway, so that works out. I have um, stuck a Heart Lantern and a Campfire here so that when I uh, if I need to retreat to the edge of the zone, I can do that. Uh, so what we're going to want to do, I'm going to get my mount going here. We'll put our buffs on, and let's see uh, how this goes. So I'm starting with... Um, this is Xeno Popper, Chlorophyte Bullets I'm using, because those are going to home in so quickly. And I did get a huge stack of Chlorophyte Bullets. 
Uh, as, as you notice there, actually, those Vortexians, um, they'll spawn a Vortex, but it's not necessarily where they die. In fact, it's clearly not where they die. Um, those Vortexes will actually spawn in above you, so you have to be ready to dodge. And yeah, that's where the Scutlish Mount particularly comes in handy. Yep, I might just want to retreat here. And as I was saying, good time to swap in the uh, shiny stone if you have it, which you should if you're playing expert. Um, and you can see how much that increases health regeneration, and that allows you to just come out to the edge a bit here. Uh, regenerate your health and then get back in the fight which ultimately is going to just save you a lot of time so yeah I mean even with all these boosts all this um, stuff all this gear you know you can't necessarily affect or expect that you're just going to go in here and just blow everything up at least not an expert so just be prepared and uh, well, ideally be better at dodging than I am but uh, as long as you're prepared and having, you know, the um, any regeneration boost you can get effectively is going to help you with that. Yeah, those vortexes are really a pain. Okay, so the really funny thing is that I didn't even notice right away um, when in fact I had killed enough enemies because again I was just hanging out on the edge watching out for the enemies there you go I managed however of course there are enemies that are still around the area and there you go though I killed the vortex pillar without quite dying it was close I'm not gonna lie but uh, no deaths for me so that's helpful and I'm actually going to remove that spawn point now. Being back to my original village and uh, just stock up on a couple things I forgot. I forgot to bring um, the Nimbus Rod in particular, which is going to be very useful. You can see I had to use my regular weapon against the Vortex Pillar, so I'll just get right back to the next fight in a sec. All right, next up, the Stardust Pillar. Um, yeah, and actually speaking of which, there we go. See, I can get three different minions, and I didn't even use any of them last time. Um, I forgot a couple things. I've got a couple extra buffs this time around as well. I had my uh, bewitching table sitting back near my original base, so that's now ready to go here. And uh, yeah, I mean, again, moving, dodging, <laughs> basically staying out of the way trying to kill everything quickly. It's kind of obvious, but those UFOs, as you can see, are going to be a big help. Keep an eye on your health, keep an eye on your buffs, keep an eye on your minions, all that stuff. But, you know, my strategy's not complicated. I didn't go for, like, a massive arena or anything. There are certainly things I could do. But uh, I don't really think it's necessary. I think this is, is kind of an uh, easier option here. Now, I'm a little low on health, so maybe I'll just duck out of here for a second. There we go. Uh, yeah, I do have a healing bonus. I think that's uh, maybe from one of my potions. Or do I have that? Oh, no, I do have the shiny stone still in place. Okay. Uh, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to swap both that and my wings out and get back in here because then I can do more damage and I always swap them back when I need them if anything I should have had those in place when I summon my minions definitely want all of the damage you can get um, those boosts again with minions they apply when you summon them Watch those flow invaders with their projectiles. I'm not too worried about uh, trying to farm star cells here. 
I just want everything to die before it kills me. <laughs> Didn't take too long with the last one. You can see those red lasers are still firing. You gotta keep an eye on that if you're, you know, fighting away from the pillar. So that you know when you've defeated the shield and you can stop the fighting. You see some enemies, they and or their projectiles will go through walls, others not so much. Oh, and damn, I died on that one. I was just going to retreat. Right, back in the fight. This time I've got uh, all my damage boosts in place when I'm summoning my minions. Little things sometimes do make a difference. Okay, and I think that actually made a big difference. Um, those UFOs really the extra power. I don't even really need to um, use the nebula or the uh, nimbus rod and stuff. Not even strictly necessary. So that's two. That's two pillars down. I mean, my weapons are powerful enough that uh, essentially... I was able to damage the pillar itself so fast because again expert mode you know the the enemies get a boost but the pillar doesn't so um, you know I was able to damage the pillar so fast it, it wasn't even worth getting above it and putting the Nimbus rod up there but I have used that before it's very powerful and uh, so there you go now most of my buffs are just about to run out if some have already so I'm just gonna get prepared for the next fight but uh, in the meantime I'm actually going to be able to craft um, the Stardust Pillar, as, or as, sorry, the Stardust Dragon is what I'm going to go with, and uh, we'll show you that in a second. Okay, so funny enough, I actually have a Blood Moon going on here. I had to go retrieve my Ancient Manipulator, uh, but I actually got enough fragments that I can craft both of the Vortex items and both of the uh, Stardust items, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to put the uh, Vortex Beater in place of my Chain Gun. I'm going to put the Phantasm. Uh, let's put that over here. Um, actually, no, I really want to use the Phantasm, so I'm going to just move all of these. <laughs> and uh, I can then do the Stardust Cell Staff and the Stardust Dragon Staff. That's not really necessary. I'm going to stick with mostly the Dragon. So we'll stick that in there. Uh, and yeah, we'll just uh, get our buffs back here. Only the ones that I need because there's a limit on how many buffs you can actually have. So there we go. I've got those in place. Let's get on my mount here again. Uh, I'm going to swap. I had swapped this temporarily. And the next pillar, let's see. Actually, I'm just going to go for the next closest one. So um, this also shows you about how they are arranged so I had my uh, vortex over here and my stardust over here um, so solar is next it looks like I'm very close to the solar pillar and then nebula I guess I'll do last normally I'd probably leave solar for last but whatever this will uh, this will help show how powerful these weapons are so uh, maybe I should just get my buffs in order here and summon the dragon I'm gonna make that as long as I can, which isn't very long. If you're a summoner, you can do a lot better, but we'll have that ready. And here we are. Yeah, I've actually already got, I brought along um, heart lanterns and a heart lantern and a campfire because I wasn't sure where I was going to be going here. But uh, yeah, let's stick with the uh, aforementioned strategy. see these melee attacks from the solar pillar are a pain um, but yeah I'm going to uh, just stick kind of near the edge there we are you can see the background changes when you're in the appropriate zone um, yeah I already have a platform here so that kind of works out although not the same way I thought I had oh I had I got enough wooden arrows I guess from the blood moon <laughs> I had some of those. So there's a crawl to peed. Yeah, you don't want those guys hanging around. And honestly, uh, yeah, I can already use a little regeneration. So, bam. And actually, you don't want to place uh, banners. If you're using a lot of buffs, there is, again, a limit on how many buffs you can have active at once. 
So you actually don't necessarily want banners uh, near where you're fighting these guys. And you can hear those are just... Those were Blood Moon enemies, but as soon as I transition into the Solar Pillar area, I'll be taking on these guys again. And yeah, I got some wooden arrows along the way, but what I actually have uh, in my ammo area, what I had put in previously, because I guess I must have used a whole stack of chlorophyte bullets. Um, I've got some holy arrows in there, because those obviously are going to be... Yeah, there we go. That's what we're talking about. Holy arrows. Oh god, these guys are painful. And yeah, solar pillar. What a minute. What, you know. There's what we're talking about. Solar pillar's hard. <laughs> solar pillar expert. Um, I did only die once against the stardust pillar, and I hope that will be the only time against the solar pillar, but I guess we'll see. So yeah, back in the fight here. Now, the thing about using a, a bow, like the phantasm or whatever, um, you do have to watch out for those projectiles being... Uh, reflected, which, I mean, is one reason not to be using the glorified bullets against the solar pillar here. As I said, that's not a good idea. But that being said, I may want to um, switch this now to the snowman cannon, which I have brought for this purpose of essentially using homing weapons. Yeah, my, my Stardust, uh, or, yeah, Stardust Dragon is zipping around so fast. You don't even get to see him much. Only problem with the snowman cannon, snowmen, is uh, you can see they actually, they're not super fast, so they, um, a little slow to target the tail of that crawl to keep. You can see those chlorites going right through the solid floor I have here. There's a Slanian, and I can still take him out with my homing snowman rockets. Yeah, I brought lots of rockets, so I guess I'm not too worried about wasting ammo. I'll just fire in the air. Spray and pray. And even though I'm against melee uh, enemies, you can see here, I'm using the right weapons, the right strategy, I'm not really having to even move a lot. <laughs> Yeah, I think this is the choice against the solar. Uh, yeah, mostly you have to work, watch out for those chlorides because they will go right through the floor and they do a little dash thing right into you. And I dash too, or I move too late here. But uh, they're not hurting me so fast that I can't heal in between, so there's that. eye out for when those lasers stop firing. I don't even, I'm not even sure. Oh yeah, they're done. So we're done with the lasers. We can take on the pillar. Firing rockets all the way. And you know what? I didn't even swap in my rocket headgear. This would be a lot more powerful if I had done that. Oh, this is going to be close. I think I got it. But, uh, yeah. Run away. Ah. I think I killed the yeah, you can see the status down there. I did kill the pillar, and then I died <laughs> from the leftover enemies. All right, so I was able to uh, actually craft, gather up all those solar fragments and craft the solar flare and the daybreak. I've only equipped the solar flare in place of my previous um, melee weapon. I like to keep one around even as a ranger, but... Uh, you can see here now I am just on the edge of the nebula pillar zone, so I am going to apply my buffs. I am actually on the last of several of those. I'm going to bring out my dragon. I'm going to actually, you know what? Whoops. See, this is when I say it's important to keep a uh, hold of details. Again, make sure that you are applying as much as possible. I will want my damage boosting accessories, then summon my dragon. And I'm going to use the vortex beater this time because chlorophyte bullets, I want to watch out for those damn alien face hugger things. Columns. Yeah, those guys. <laughs> We're just going to blast everything. I'm feeling more confident against this one. Brain sucklers, that's what they're called. I'm 
feeling more confident about this one than the uh, solar pillar. This is actually pretty easy if you have a powerful homing weapon. And of course I have all my upgraded gear. I have my upgraded ranger weapon. Chlorophyte bullets are okay for this one. I have my Stardust Dragon now. You can see how you can basically power up throughout the course of the event. Make the best use possible of the gear that uh, you can acquire along the way. I even have my Inferno Potion still. Help keep those brain sucklers away a little bit. So really just, you know, this one I'm, I'm not too worried. It's hopefully unlikely that I'm going to die or suffer anything horrible or catastrophic. <laughs> Between my Vortex Beater with glorified Bullets and my Stardust Dragon, and all of those buffs, and my mount with its lasers, case, I'll just retreat a little again. You know what? I'm not that worried. I am uh, a little low on health at the moment, but it's coming back. Yeah, in fact, I'm close enough, even though I'm at the edge of, uh, of this zone. I'm close enough, you can see I've actually still got my campfire and heart lantern, which I put just on the edge of the zone. So that's why my health with my regeneration potion as well. My health is regenerating nice and quickly. Health regenerates faster when you stand still, by the way. Yeah, those laser guys. They're the ones that are hurting me here most of all. Uh, the brain cyclers are really the most dangerous, but as long as you have something powerful and homing, uh, you can kind of get rid of them before they get you. There's one. One got to me. I killed him quickly too. That's another thing about the homing bullets. The nebula floaters. Laser guys. Pretty heavy damage there. Evolution beasts can do uh, pretty powerful damage too if they get to you, but they're not really getting to me, so... I did make a confusing statement about banners. Um, you don't want other banners other than the ones to do with the uh, pillar you're currently fighting. But ones to do with your current pillar are useful, I think. Yeah, not seeing any more red lasers, so let's go in. I'll just apply what buffs I have left. Literally running out of buff potions at this point. Uh, of course, this is where I put my fishing pole. Ah, that's a problem. Okay, I'm going to need to, I'm actually going to retreat just for a second to swap in my wings. And yeah, I got damaged doing that much. Gotta be very careful not to die here. Oh god, that's not helping. Come on, Stardust Dragon, help me out here. Ah! <laughs> I'm just trying to swap in my wings and, uh so that I would be able to fly over my fishing hole. I, I, I trapped myself. That's brilliant. <laughs> okay, so the sad thing is I only died. I only died against the Nebula Pillar because of this right here. My own little self-inflicted barrier. And I, you know what? I think my Stardust Cell Dragon just killed the pillar without me even seeing it. So yes, I, I did it. <laughs> uh, right there, I just did it. And the Moon Lord is coming, and I'm not going to fight the Moon Lord today, but I uh, hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. What a funny way to end it, right?